Alright, well, welcome back to our Dominions 4 playthrough. Um, so, we were in the process of, uh, yeah, we secured our initial starting location here, and we were in the process of advancing further down south, so let's do that. What I'm going to do is, that first and foremost, I'm going to reorganize our little uh, force here by a small amount. And then after that, I am going to start building that fortress that we've been talking about. So I'm going to do that here. Um, generally speaking, your military commanders like the Centurion can build fortresses and whatnot. And then your priests and whatnot can build temples and laboratories. It's a shame that we can't build a laboratory this turn. So uh, we're just going to get these two guys to just kind of stay here. And I'm going to get our uh, demigod to lead our main forces in conquering the rest of the uh, unconquered territories for now. And back inside our capital, we're just going to be producing a lot more units. So that is going to be this turn, or actually we should check on our uh, magical research. So we have some of the basic spells here. Um, we want level 3 enchantment for the raised skeletons ability, and the, uh, the create revenant ability, so we're going to wait a little bit on that, and uh, later on we do want to get uh, level 4 as well. Uh, for now, what we can do is that we can actually cast a ritual spell, which is a strategical magical spell, which will be able to do a few things. We're going to be able to reanimate some of the uh, some of the dead uh, with our death gems. We have to spend death gems for these two spells, and we alternatively can uh, re revive a mound king. Um, because I don't know what a mound king is, I'm actually going to do that simply for the sake of uh, you know satisfying my curiosity. So let's do that. Um, we don't have to review the, these battles, so I'm just going to quickly take a look at what has happened to them. We have obviously won on both battlefields, so that is good. And it looks like we've summoned a Mound King now. So that is good, that is good. I think I'll get my guys to uh, go back to researching, seeing as how that Mound King did not look uh, particularly impressive. Get him to move forward, and I believe we have enough money now to build that temple. So yeah, we're just going to do a little bit more of that, um, a little bit more conquest, a little bit more uh, research, and that's essentially going to be the end of this turn. There we go, so another battle, the independence should be uh, essentially killed, and it looks like a worldwide event happened. So random events can be provincially based, like that little group of independents that rose up for some reason. And there are some worldwide events like this that will just kind of happen overall. Um, it looks like for some reason world magic levels have dropped, so um, yeah, that's going to imply a... Uh, a negative research modifier onto our guys, so unfortunately we won't be able to uh, research as efficiently now. Um, with that said, I guess there's not really much that we can do about it, except for, you know, tough it out. And it looks like we met our first AI opponent down here, which is rather interesting. Um, so I'm just going to move my units around for now, and I'm going to get my scout to actually take a look at their fortress and see what is there. And that uh, fortress that we've been building should be here in about uh, three turns, which is fine. So yeah, some things happened, another random event happened, and the dormant pretender gods are now awakening. So what this means is that uh, if you chose to build a really powerful pretender god, but you didn't choose to uh, essentially enable him at the very start of the game, then um, you could exchange um, exchange your uh, your first few turns with your demigod for the uh, the purpose of essentially making him dormant, giving yourself about 150 more design points, and giving yourself the option of getting uh, them now. So we should, yeah, we've made a few more researchers here, and they're just going to be doing their own little research things. We should have level 3 um, yeah, enchantment in just a little bit, so that's going to be good. And let's spy on what exactly is present inside this uh, little fortress over here. So there's a there's a faction here. Uh, their banner will always be the sword with the little red thing, the red banner with red sail below it. And these guys are the people of um, Midgard, I believe. 
Midgard, they are uh, they are based upon Norse mythology. They have Huskarl units, and those um, and I and I think they have earth magic and a lot of air magic. Um, so that's kind of that. But they will they will uh, essentially be focusing on using a lot of their berserker troops, I believe, which are going to be these uh, these huge, uh, which are these um, fairly powerful guys with good offensive attacks, but they don't have very very good um, protection, I believe. And the point of using those guys is that you can use a a buff called berserk, which will make them attack really good, but they don't uh, they don't defend very well when they are berserk. So that's kind of that. In the meantime, because we started off inside this uh, little um, like sub region, as opposed to the mainlands down here, we're we're just going to have to uh, spend a little bit of time in getting our in get our uh, armies effectively moved from one place to another. So I'm going to get these shadow style guys, and I'm going to give it to the to Lausus over here, the sensor. So our uh, Legatus Legionus guys are able to command the majority of the regular troops and the Mound King uh, is actually also able to command normal troops and also undead beings and demons. The sensor over here, he is uh, also able to command he's a uh, yeah, he's also able to command the undead and demons, so he's actually going to be leading a lot of our sacred units and we're just going to bring be uh, bring that to the front as well. And in the meantime, I'm going to buy a single priest over here, simply because we do want uh, one guy to be following our armies and giving them blessings. So, um, let's see. Yeah, that's pretty much that. And our main army over here can advance a little bit further. Actually, no, I'm going to get our demigod to stop his advance for now. And what I'm going to get him to do is that I'm going to get him to move back over here, and he's going to start searching provinces for magical sites, because uh, there's a stack of like 80-some units here, and I really don't want to risk my demigod just yet. So yeah, we're going to move him back as we move some reinforcements on to the front. And I think that, yeah, we do have level 3 uh, magic now, so I think I'll switch our magic production into... into alteration, maybe? Alteration doesn't have a lot of stuff that we need, I guess. I think I'll do. Um, I think I'll do pharmacology, uh, I guess. And I'll get our troops moving forward once again. And I want my demigod to start searching provinces for uh, magical sites, just like that. So what he's going to do is that um, you have these two schools of magic here: death magic and astral magic. Uh, what this allows our Prince of Death to do is that he can effectively go around and search with his two skills for astral magic sites and death magic sites um, inside our various different provinces. So he's just going to be kind of doing that. Um, typically, if you have a higher level inside one school of magic, you are more likely to find sites, simply because some sites are a higher level. So for example, um, a level 1 death mage will not be able to find uh, sites which uh, pertain to a which uh, have a level four death mage uh, requirement, so that's kind of that. And in the meantime, inside our rear ranks, I guess we'll recruit uh, some more guys. I think I'll actually get some of these guys with the uh, with the really long spears. Yeah, some of these guys. And we're also going to be getting a grand um, thaumaturg, which is going to be our uh, one of our higher wizards, which are going to cast the uh, majority of our super powerful spells. And let's see what happens here. So, did we find magical sites? No, unfortunately, we did not. Um, oh well, that is fine. Let's get uh, let's get these guys first and foremost unequipped. And let's get him searching the other provinces for sites. And in the meantime, we're going to be assembling a rather large army here. And inside this province, we're also going to be recruiting some more of these uh, uh, thematurg people. One of the main reasons that you want to have a lot of fortresses just kind of around is that uh, you want these places to generate commanders. Once again, simply because you, generally speaking, can only buy one per turn. 
I'm actually going to uh, stop searching the sites right now and I'm actually going to see what trinkets that we can make for our demigod over here. And it doesn't look like we can make a lot of very good things, so never mind. Um, the School of Magic here in Thaumatology, it mainly focuses on Astral spells and it has a few Death spells, but um, this section of magic is fairly varied. Unlike uh, the other schools of magic, which generally speaking deal with uh, spells and things regarding one subject, things in here generally speaking deal with like a lot of different uh, uses. For example, the communion master and the communion slaves here, they deal with um, forming a magical uh, a circle of mages essentially. So then, uh, for example, if you don't, if you have a spell that needs a uh, level, say level four, um, air mage. Uh, skill to cast. If you only have a level 3 air mage, uh, you can get two more air mages and effectively combine them inside this little daisy chain with the communion master and communion slaves and you can effectively increase your combined uh, total air mage spells uh, or skills by doing that. And the other benefit to doing that is that each and every spell on the, on the combat field will generally have some sort of fatigue cost so if the fatigue cost value goes uh, beyond a value of 200, your magical caster will effectively faint and then he'll start to take damage um, if it goes past the 200 point value. So if you have a chain, a daisy chain of different mages, you can split up the cost for some really really powerful spells. Um, so let's see how much you, um, does this one have. Uh, these are all rituals so they won't have a cost yet. So soul drain, it costs 500 fatigue to cast this on the battlefield. If you cast this on the battlefield, you have the chance of killing your mage. So um, if you do have that astral communion set up, you can just kind of get that set up and not kill your uh, your mages. The other thing that um, this school of magic allows you to do is that we've been sight searching with our demigod, essentially moving him, searching a province, moving him, searching the province, and doing that over and over again. Well, it's not that efficient if you're looking for only one particular type of sight. For example, you can pick up the uh, you can pick up the gnome lore ability over here, or no, let's see which one is a good one. You can get the uh, you can get the the spell over here, which is the uh, Aus Auspex, which is a spell which will essentially search provinces for air for sites that or sites that relate to air power or the air path of magic, and it'll effectively find all of the sites that are that are fit into the air element. And it'll find them no matter what, but it'll cost air gems. It has a limited range, but you don't have to move your commanders every single turn and then search every turn, so it removes that two-turn process. But it does have the uh, the penalty of costing gems. Um, but either way, that'll be pretty helpful later on. So you do need to grab a few of those things from the school of magic to be uh, really, really uh, effective. So we're going to be doing that. And then the second thing that I'm going to be doing is that I'm going to be grabbing a lot of these guys and we are hopefully going to go and take out that little fortress over there. Um, we're hopefully going to be able to siege that fortress. So let's get our troops moving just like this and let's see where this leads to. Demigod comes out. He's going to uh, he's going to claim the throne of ascension first and foremost. Uh, you do have to claim these thrones before you uh, you actually start. You actually have ownership of them, so we do have to claim it. I'm going to essentially group all of these guys up here, and I'm going to get him, them to move forward. And I think that is uh, that is really all there is to do here. Um, yeah. Could get uh, could get the centurion to go back over there, but for now um, we're just going to have to wait a little bit, get some more magical levels inside some of these things, um, do a little bit more research, and really just start stacking up troops. So we should yeah we should have finished research. We should have claimed a throne, and it looks like somebody else also claimed a throne of ascension. So that's uh, that's good news, good and bad news. We're getting closer to victory, but uh, one of our opponents is as well. 
still building units, still have a large army here. Um, let's take a look at that Throne of Ascension, actually. So, generally speaking, these Thrones of Ascension will um, help you snowball your game. Um, and if once you claim them, they should give us some sort of benefit. And it looks like this particular throne generates three fire gems per turn, and it allows our blessed units to get plus three attack skill, and it allows us to recruit one particular type of unit, um, provided that we have a lab. This guy is actually a pretty powerful mage with a fire level three, so he can cast a fireball and some of the area of attack fire um, fire schools of magic like that. So we're actually going to. Uh, but we are going to hopefully get our uh, yeah we're going to have to get a one of our priests slash mages over there and we're going to have to get him to make a lab so then we can start recruiting those fire mages and those fire mages should actually be able to build our uh, our commander here a special item a fire sword which will definitely increase his combat potential as well. So let's see nothing found here unfortunately going to get our guy to move back over there and get this guy to build that lab I was talking about and let's get some more troops to the front and since we already have a uh, level 2 here uh, do we need level 3 is what I'm wondering level 3 would be useful in that it grants us the arc astral window and the teleport spell but I think that can wait for now I think I'll put my magical research into alteration now so um, let's get a few benefits from here. Or actually, no, let's go for evocation instead. Uh, yeah, we really do need to figure out what type of magic that we really want to, uh, to kind of use. Um, I think we'll just do... I think we'll do evocation for now because I want some good fire uh, spells, such as flare, and then fireball, and then emit fires from afar, and then fire cloud and whatnot. So, yeah, I think we'll do a little bit of that for now. And I'll get the other guys to be doing a little bit of research and whatnot. And I think I'll get one of these guys to cast a ritual spell. Uh, not these guys, they can't do it. Can you do it? Oh, that's why we haven't unlocked it yet. Uh, you can cast a spell here called Astral Projection, I believe, so long as you obviously research it. Um, what tab is it in again? Oh, it's an evocation, so we'll have it later on anyways. That is a ability which will effectively allow us to scout one of these provinces remotely, and that'll be rather helpful in uh, determining whether or not we can take this fortress over here. In the meantime, it looks like all of our back stuff has set up, so let's uh, fight this little army that the that the uh, Midgard people has put for us. So let's see. I'll get the Leg the Legatus Legionus here to just kind of drop his units and form them into about three different squads, I, I guess. And we'll assign them two banners each. Three for that one, so then they should, yeah, they should all have a bonus of three morale, so these guys aren't likely to break. And I'm going to get these guys to assemble into a large formation like that. And yeah, they should stay, and they should just effectively attack forward. So these guys are going to attack closest enemy. These guys are going to attack a uh, rear enemy. These guys are going to attack a rear enemy as well. And, uh, we're actually, let's place them out a little bit farther. So these guys are going to be flanking troops. And in the center column, there we go. In the center column, we will have the Shadow of the Styles being inside the front, and they are uh, really going to smash up main the middle line of their troops. Our priest, named Adolf, is going to cast some blessing spells, so he's going to take over that. And actually, make him cast a few more times. And our uh, our mage over here is going to cast a few spells for us. He's going to uh, he's going he could animate some skeletons if we want to do it. But I think what we'll do for him is I will cast him. We'll get him to cast uh, astral shield, which will protect him from stray arrows and whatnot. And then I think I'll get him to cast a few of these uh, sermon of courage spells, so he'll buff our morale even more. And what else can he do? He can do Unholy Command. 
Uh, because we're playing as a faction that can use the undead, we do get a few of these unholy blessing spells and unholy power spells, and these can these these are pretty much uh, special blessings that we can grant to undead people uh, on the on the chance that they um, what what do you call it um, on the fact that they uh, lead a undead column. The problem with that is that, uh, or rather, the good thing about them is that they when they cast those spells, uh, they, the undead people, they don't have to be sacred units for it to take effect, so you can uh, actually use the use those blessings on um, just undead troops. They don't have to be sacred undead troops, making it really rather helpful. And I have a feeling that's all we really have to do. We still are building that lab, so we're just going to continue doing that, and let's, uh, let's see what happens during this big fight. Hopefully win, we win, hopefully we don't, you never know, and it looks like we we were able to do quite a lot of damage, which is good. Let's see what has happened over here. So yeah, there we go, we have our troops assembled here. Um, I want to I wanna talk about a few of the troops right now. Uh, first and foremost, wait, I want to see what this, uh, what this guy, the Mound King, does. So the Mount King is that unit that we summoned up. He has a pretty good protect. Uh, he has a pretty good movement bonus. He has decent weapons for the most part, and it looks like he has a decent protect uh, defense skill. But it looks like he doesn't have a lot of HP. But the good thing about him is that he is an amphibian, so he can go into the sea. He is a undead unit and all that, so he doesn't need to eat and do and that all of that all of that good stuff. But from the looks of it, the main thing about him is that he appears to be a unit that you can use. You can equip him with some items, and you can essentially send him off into battle. He'll um, rush the rear ranks, hopefully, and kill off the enemies as commanders. Is is what um, he looks like he's good for. For their lines, it looks like they're using a lot of ogres. So really big guys. Uh, they have mountain survival. They do a lot of damage with their uh, great clubs at 25. Good protection at. Uh, 12 and they have a lot of HP so they should be able to last quite a long time in battle against uh, humanoids and then inside the rear here they have some uh, wishy-washy troops but they have a special commander here which is the Van Hurst over here and these guys are yeah these guys are pretty cool they have air magic from the looks of it this guy isn't all that powerful but the uh, the main thing about them is that they have this glamour ability which allows them to cast these illusions and uh, that's essentially what you're seeing here so they're they're able to hide where they are making it so that people miss them a lot just like how uh, a lot of people miss our uh, shadow the styles so hopefully yeah, our main lines here are going to tie up those ogres and our side lines are going to come behind, hopefully sweeping off the majority of those fish things. And it looks like that. Okay, so that was a fairly effective battle there. Um, that battle must have generated quite a lot of corpses. So what we can do now is that because we don't need... Uh, yeah, we're going to wait here, and I'm going to try to bait out the enemy to, into fighting us um, here. And in the meantime, what I can do with our uh, with our tomato bird, or whatever he's called, I'm going to get him to reanimate some of the dead. So he's just going to sit in this province, and he is going to be reanimating... Uh, long dead warriors because there are 80 corpses caused by that battle we can just kind of summon up some uh, extra troops for us there and because I don't feel like we have enough to take out their fortress just yet uh, we're going to try to whittle their troops down by a little bit by just kind of sitting that province and allowing them to attack us and in the meantime I'm going to go back to our capital here and I'm going to get one of our centurions to lead a stack of these guys these traeris into the fray. So these guys are really really strong uh, spearmen from our faction. They don't do a lot of damage but they have long spears and they have high protection so you know defense skill plus long weapon plus high protection makes it very easy for the opponent to miss our guy and in the event that it does hit our trooper our high protection value should uh, handle them. 
the bad thing about these guys is that for some reason they have old age by default, um, lowering their stats by a little bit. Uh, the good thing is that they fight well in formations, so what we can essentially do with these guys is that in the event that we don't have any ethereal troops available, we can get them to form a double uh, line and they will effectively keep the enemy at bay just like uh, what we've been doing with our uh, other guys, the something something shadow the styles, there we go. And in the meantime we're going to uh, start recruiting some of these adept of um, pri 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 you know, fire mages, these guys. We're going to get a few of these guys and um, they're going to hopefully cast quite a lot of fire magic for us and in addition they may uh, also make us some fire equipment which is nice. And I think I'll actually get two of our priests over here to start moving with our army because we we want more of our mages with our army now, now that we have a good uh, core research group. Doesn't look like we found very many uh, research things, although we were able to completely annihilate another army of one of our opponents, which is rather nice. So that is good in one sense and bad in another. So these guys are going to move forward, these guys are going to come up here. And let's actually view this battle at the promised land. So we were, uh, yeah, we were with the doctrine of kind of taking away our uh, enemies' units here. So this is going to butcher some of their ogres and some of their linebacker units from the looks of it. They have a lot of these Huskarl guys, so yeah, um, they're, they're decent overall. They're experienced units, so they have a little bit more morale and a more attack skill and whatnot. Uh, their axes do quite a lot of damage at 17 value here, but um, because they aren't, they don't do pierce damage, they have a little bit of a harder time going through armor. Either way though, they're not going to be able to hit our uh, Shadow the Style people over here. Got their, um, we managed to beg their commander that time, that's really cool. Okay, well that's good. Um, I would prefer it if we had a little bit of a chance to get our mages here to uh, search these lands for magical sites, but it looks like we are, yeah, there, there's a big army here that we might have to deal with. So I'm going to get these troops here and I'm going to spend the rest of this turn reanimating the dead for now. Um, so yeah, we're just going to do that. We're going to fight another big battle in a little bit, don't worry. And the rest of our guys sitting inside our capital can actually start, um, doing some stuff now. Actually, I think I'll get one of our mages inside our capital to actually cast this, uh, create, a uh, revenant spell, which should, uh, summon up another commander. Hopefully, he's a little better than those, um, mound kings, because those guys weren't very effective. Looks like we already fought another big uh, gigantic battle. Yeah, looks like yeah, they uh, they they decide to fight us this time. But it looks like we took quite a lot of damage. We uh, we took a lot of damage inside our auxiliary uh, spearmen li lines. It looks like they were able to take out um, a few of our legionnaires. And did they kill any of our shadow this time? So, yeah, they did. They did kill some of these guys, and it looks like they took out some of our uh, standard bearers, but it looks like we absolutely devastated their army, so that's fine. Um, let's see what we should do here. Are we still recruiting these guys? Yeah, we are. Okay, that's good. Generally speaking, I'm just going to continue, like, um, I'm just going to continue making these, uh, wizard people for the rest of the game, simply because, like, the more you have, the better. Um, they don't have a very high upkeep from the looks of it, so yeah, we should be fine. Oh, that's right, they are, uh, these guys are sacred units too, I forgot to talk about this. Uh, sacred units have half the upkeep that they usually need, and the upkeep is usually, uh, one fifteenth of the amount that you, uh, need to use to buy the unit, so yeah, they're fairly cheap like that. This, um, this revenant thing appears to be a average commander 
Um, can he lead a lot of troops though? Yeah, he can lead a lot of undead troops, just not a lot of rev uh, regular troops. So I guess that's a good thing. Um, we're just going to get him to research. It looks like our summons here aren't really that effective. And over here, I'm going to get the mages over here to reanimate some more soulless people. Because there's, yeah, there's a stack of like 200 some bodies, and that's going to be rather useful inside the long term. And we have one fire mage available, so we're going to get him, or her, or whoever this person is, up onto the front lines, because that is really going to be uh, useful as well, and we're going to be doing a little bit of searching inside the back of our lines. Unfortunately, no sites were found, and another little force was uh, taken out, so that's good. Let's get some more of these uh, mages moving down, and I think I'll get our uh, our demigod to go back to the capital, because I think it's, uh, it's going to be a good time to turn our research into construction research and equip him with some goods. In the meantime, since we're reanimating a lot of the dead, let's see how many of those guys we have reanimated. These guys, the soulless. Yeah, these are these guys are the soulless warriors from the uh, from the thing. So these guys are just really, really average fighters in general. They have high protection and they have a resistance to uh, to piercing weapons, I believe. Do they? No, they don't. They don't have it. Okay, my mistake. But they have a high hit point value for what they're worth, and you can. Well, we we are essentially summing them for free. And uh, with that being said, right, we can just kind of use them as meat shields for the most part. Gonna grab them, put them, stick them over... no, not here. Stick them inside here with the uh, sensor, hopefully. Yeah, there we go. And they will effectively be another rank of meat shields for our boys. Okay, so there we go. So that should get that set up with this large blob of undisciplined troops, which... Uh, undisciplined troops, you can't issue them any uh, any uh, formation orders or any orders in general, so we're just going to have to kind of let them do their own thing. And then we're just going to get this ball and going to uh, kind of charge it over there. And for research, I think I'll research like a few. One uh, guy, one commander for now. And that'll be this turn. What has happened here? Oh crap. That's not good. It looks like what has happened is that um, you can cast a spell which is called Call of the Winds, I think, and it'll summon up a whole bunch of uh, Black Hawks and Great Hawks somewhere on the map, and it looks like our opponents here at Windhelm has decided to do that to us, and he summoned that. Uh, generally speaking, these Black Hawks aren't very, uh, they're not very deadly, but the problem with them is that they can kill off commanders if you just kind of leave them there, and one of our uh, Fire Mages was walking through the battlefield, and they managed to pick him off, which is rather unfortunate. Back inside our capital, we are still doing what we were currently doing, still researching. Really want to get our uh, construction level up to about level 4, and then we can make uh, greater magical items, which then we can equip our uh, commanders with, which will be fairly useful. And over here, we're just going to start uh, sieging the enemy, really. And I'll get one uh, guy over here to just continue reanimating the dead. I think I'll get him and his buddy over here to continue reanimating the dead. And the rest of these guys are just going to siege the enemy's capital, so hopefully we'll be able to eliminate one of the uh, guys out of the game just kind of uh, right now, just kind of uh, on the first turn, or on the, uh, or really early inside the game is what I meant. <laughs> oh my god. No, I think it's actually time to end this part because, oh my god, I've been playing for a long time. Going to see you guys later on. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe because I have run out of words for today from the looks of it.